This is the Lockhart Raven 9 1000 round review. 1000 rounds has been reached on this thing. I finally gotten there. I've tried a few different things, tested out a few different triggers, uh, different muzzle devices, different um, mags, slightly different ammo, and I even had one or two experiences with warranty support. So let's get into this first of all with just some footage. Now if you want to just watch this footage and then fuck off, well the TODR is it is a very good rifle. There are a couple of quirks that some may like, some may not. There are some interesting things about the rifle, and there are some not necessarily good things about the rifle. And there are a bunch of very good things about the rifle. So, first of all, I want to talk about the impulse, the recoil impulse, the feeling of shooting it. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is a very nice shooting rifle. There, it's an 18 and a half inch barrel, right? So it's, and it's nine millimeter. So it's obviously not going to recoil a lot, but there is a bit of um, muzzle flipping without a muzzle brake. Without a muzzle brake, it's almost like it's just jumpy. And I think that's because of the weight distribution. This is a very well-balanced rifle. It's 6.4 pounds unloaded with nothing on it, which means, and most of the weight is in the receiver because it's a blowback operation, right? So you need the weight in the receiver. The barrel is uh, a pencil barrel from a pencil barrel or near a pencil barrel. And that means the front end is much lighter, and so I think that's where the jumpiness comes from. With a muzzle brake, the recoil impulse doesn't... Like, the jumpiness goes away, but the recoil impulse actually increases a little bit. Like, you feel it in your shoulder a bit more, which is interesting. But it's not unpleasant or anything like that. It actually feels nice to have a gun that feels like it has more recoil than it actually has and you can control it it's almost like it's it's almost like it's some weird gun that like doesn't that shouldn't exist anyway it is a very pleasant recoiling system now, in comparison to the K9, which I sold to get this one to review, it does have that bit more recoil. And I think that's just purely down to the weight. The weight of this rifle, the weight distribution being almost entirely here with a little bit out front, versus the K9, which is heavy all over. It's very evenly weight distributed because it has a bull barrel, which means the recoiling and the muzzle flip is much less on the K9. So if you're really recoil sensitive, don't get this. Get the K9 or get a PC9 or something else that's heavier because it will shoot softer. But this is snappier. And so I had this video comparison here uh, from last time of the difference with and without a compensator. And you can see that it's slight but there is more muzzle jump to the one without the compensator. So, that's good to know. Now, some, and I'm in this video, I'll be jumping back and forth between some good, some bad. Next thing I want to talk about is the stock furniture. The stock furniture comes with an M4 style stock and an A2 grip. And the A2 grip is fine for some people, but the M4 stock is honestly quite terrible. Um, that's, and for a rifle that's this expensive, right, with the platinum version of this is, was it, 1650 bucks? 
it's almost inexcusable that it comes with such a shit stock because you have to get another one, in my opinion. It's just not good enough. Like the K9 comes with this stock and it's like 1300 bucks. So I know a small company, but like even just the regular Magpul MOE, I think really should be included in that price tag and not increase the price. Pistol grip, whatever. Some like the A2, some don't. So that's fine. Uh, the other thing is, so here we'll look at the muzzle. It is half by 28. So you may have a hard time finding some muzzle devices. I didn't, but it's, it's there are some muzzle devices that are 5 8 by 24 um, for 9 mil and then there's some there like use a European type thread and so you have to there are more limited options than say just the 556 five, one it's you have to actually make sure you're buying the right thing because I almost bought the wrong thing now I want to talk about the takedown so the takedown this is kind of a neutral not necessarily good not necessarily bad thing this is a preference thing takedown is easy you can use your fingers but i just find it easier to use a uh, tool this is the thing that some people might not like the takedown pins are not captive now they're easy to put in they're easy to take out, but, oh, mag release, we'll get to that in a second. Hold on. There we go, sorry, that was just an awkward angle. The takedown pins are easy to work with in terms of putting in and taking out. They're they go in very easy the problem is they're not captive and i know some people really won't like that i don't know i don't know how much it really matters the reason i believe this is done is because this the raven is a series of rifles not just in nine millimeter five five six seven six two three oh eight and you just change the magwell in the upper, and if you had a captive takedown pin, it would have to be stuck to the magwell, which there really isn't room for, and you would only have a rear takedown pin, and maybe that's worth it, maybe not, I don't know. The benefit is there's no takedown pin springs, so you can't lose those, but yeah, that's a total, uh, that's totally up to the individual preferences. I also want to talk about the triggers. So right now I have the ACT trigger in here. I can't remember the name of the company, but it's the ACT advanced combat trigger. It's the four and a half pound essentially combat trigger. Um, it's very similar dimensionally. Some things are smoothed out, so it's a smoother trigger pull, uh, but otherwise it's the same. I've had a trigger tech fixed three and a half pound competitive trigger in here, and I've had a mil spec trigger, the one the gun comes with. And again, triggers are entirely personal preference. They all worked, they were all fine. Um, but in my opinion, and you can buy the, tr the gun with a trigger tech trigger, in my opinion, the trigger tech trigger isn't worth it. But I also kind of have that opinion just in general. I think this trigger is excellent for the price. It's like half the price of a trigger tech and it functions just as well. My opinion might change when trigger tech releases their new uh, fixed one stage trigger, which should be coming out soon. That one might be very good. But for me, the ones, the two stage uh, competitive uh, triggers, they're 300 bucks, two, 
the that range is between 280 and 330 and in my opinion it's just not worth it it's a nice trigger but for the price i think you're better off spending on an optic or just a nicer gun in the first place all right let me get this thing back together all right so how about accuracy well i think accuracy has been pretty good as you will see here um i did a 20 to 25 ish meter um accuracy test and then i also did a 50 meter accuracy test and i think the results are pretty decent uh at 25 yards you'll see here uh it's about a thumb sized um discrepancy and put up a picture here the top middle grouping that you see there is the accuracy of this thing at 50 meters there was one flyer to the north there um but otherwise pretty good um you know this if you're using this in competition which is what this thing is really made for or plinking you're gonna have no problem with accuracy now this is probably the most negative part of the video and that is the magazine so this magazine that is what it comes with it is a kci usa magazine that is ironically made in korea and it's not great first of all the spring pressure was extraordinarily strong it took a few rounds to get through for the spring pressure to decrease okay that's fine that's true on most magazines but the polymer body that this is made of is definitely a worse quality than other magazines <sighs> I don't know if it's possible for you to see, but the lip on this magazine has flared. And what that has caused is this. I can pull it out without actuating the mag release. And I had one time this mag flew out the bottom of the gun after I took a shot. Now, I went back and forth talking with uh, warranty support with the company and my guess and his best guess was that it was a combination of the magazine and this mag release. Now, I don't know if I necessarily buy this mag release that this is the problem it might be but honestly i think the reality is that it just comes with a poor magazine now i ran the last 400 rounds i ran this magazine without the left hand side mag release and didn't have any problems so maybe it is but my guess is it's just a poor magazine um I used P mags uh, as well, and these ran flawlessly. Never had a problem with any P mags. And I also used these. These are 40 cal Glock mags. And you might be thinking, isn't this a 9mm mag or a 9mm gun? Yes, it is a 9mm gun. But you can use 40 caliber magazines in nine millimeter mag wells they are dimensionally identical on the outside where they're different is the feed ramp the feed lips obviously and the inner dimension is a bit different now you can load legally in canada up to 13 rounds of nine mil in here the reason it's legal unlike the 50 Beowulf magazines and loading 556 is that it doesn't really work um and you'll see throughout footage uh, that i play that these magazines 
can really only hold between five and eight rounds, and then the rounds just stop holding their proper shape, and as game over, it jams immediately. You'll see that a couple of times in this footage. Speaking of footage, I may as well play it here. Play some more footage here. Now, the other thing that I had that was not necessarily great was the charging handle. Now, in this footage, this first clip you're seeing, there's no side charging handle, just the top charging handle. And now on this one, you're seeing there is a side charging handle. And the reason that happened was when I bought the gun, which I bought from G4C, the side charging handle was not included. In fact, there was literally no way to run the gun. And the only reason I could was that I had a spare 8 mil spec AR charging handle. Which, yes, this gun takes mil spec, <coughs> excuse me, AR charging handles. And so, what caused that? Well, it turns out, likely at G4C, or in shipping to G4C, the charging handle broke off on the left side of the gun. And G4C either didn't know or didn't notice, and so they just shipped off the gun. Now, I contacted uh, Lockhart, and they sent one out free of charge. So, in terms of sending out parts, excellent. He did it quickly. He understood. He was surprised to happen, but he got it sent out. So that's very nice. And the charging handle itself now is just okay. So it just screws in to the side of the bolt carrier group. I've put hockey tape around it, but it comes textured. And it's nice to operate. I, I like using the side charging handle to operate it. The problem is that it could be better designed. A theme of this rifle is easy to take down. And that if you take out these two pins and you take out these two pins, you can take the handguard off, you can take the magwell off, you can separate the upper and lower, you can unscrew this, and you can take out the bolt carrier group, and it's really easy to disassemble. Now, in the pursuit of ease of takedown, I think a good charging handle was lost in translation. A good side charging handle was lost in translation, because from using the charging handle to pulling back, this can loosen, and then under recoil, this will loosen as well. I've never had it fall out, but I have had to go back after a few mags to tighten it back down. Now, top charging handle, you can order, you can order a top charging handle from Lockhart Direct, and it's their own their own version of an AR charging handle, and it's all right. I mean, the latch points on here are quite nice, and it can be decent to run, but it's also quite expensive, and for the price you're paying for a top charging handle from them, I would say, I don't know if it's worth it, like, Get yourself a mil spec one if you're fine with that. You're saving a lot of money. Get yourself uh, what's a Blackhawk no latch charging handle for like sixty bucks. Or if you really want to spurge, get yourself a Radiant Raptor charging handle. Personally, I if you want to order direct from with the top charging handle, go ahead. I don't think it's necessary. And. Also, I would like to play this video again because I think it shows 
how well balanced this rifle is. You can literally use it like a pistol. And I think that's where I want to leave this gun and my impression of it. This is an extraordinarily well balanced rifle. It ran 9mm, 124, and 115 grain just fine. It has a pleasant recoil impulse with and without a muzzle device. It accepts various different triggers and they all work. It's personal preference. And it's a really cool looking rifle. And this is all without mentioning its party trick of becoming another rifle. Change out the magwell, change out the upper, and you got yourself a 7.62x39, a 5.56, a 22LR, a 308, or really anything. And I think that is really cool. And this rifle, it's expensive. It's more expensive than an FX9. It's more expensive than a K9. It's definitely more expensive than a PC9. But it's really well built. No creep, no crack in anything. And you get, from my experience, good warranty. Support, at least. Um, I never had to send in the gun, but he was good to talk to, and the warranty support seemed pretty good. And you know what? That's it's a pretty rare combination of things in Canada. Um, Kodiak makes rifles that are okay. They have some problems. Some are good. Some are bad. Some are the best in their class, but they're not excellent rifles. I think this is an excellent rifle with a few quirks. If you want to know more about specific things... You can go back and check out my overview, first shots, and 600 round update. I kind of talk about some of these things more in depth or mention them as my thoughts were evolving. You can see how my thoughts evolved over time. Anyway, that is it for the end of this video altogether. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer.